all right y'all we are back with another video this one is coming by the man the myth the legend the man himself man thomas soul name of this one is called the fallacies of race now before we get to the video be sure y'all hit that like button shout out to everybody uh from my last few videos everybody been going crazy hitting that like button and i really really appreciate it and uh appreciate everybody that been subscribing to the channel appreciate it like i said let's keep it going if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on none of this content that i got coming all right so without further ado let's go ahead and dive straight into this let's go economic facts and fallacies quote some things are believed because they are demonstrably true but many other things are believed simply because they have been asserted repeatedly." Close mm. quote. You wish to let that gloomy observation on human nature stand? Yes. All right, policies of race. Racism caused slavery. Race wasn't the basis of slavery? Oh, it's a, it's a simple historical matter. Uh, slavery existed for thousands of years, as far back as there are any records of human beings. Uh, archaeological finds suggest that, race, race, that slavery rather existed before human beings could read and write. So what race, a racial difference between the slaves and the enslavers, that is a relatively new phenomenon. You, you didn't have in ancient times the ability to go to another continent and move millions of people across, of a different race across the ocean. So you enslaved the people who were nearby. The Europeans enslaved Slavs for centuries before they, enslaved, before they brought the first black uh, African to the Western Hemisphere. Wow. Okay. But so you're not suggesting, you do not wish to say anything other than that slavery as practiced in the United States was it may have been recent, but you'd argue, you'd be willing to grant that it was particularly perverse and 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 destructive no, it's because it's because race got mixed into it at that point, right? Race got mixed into it in the United States more than anywhere else for a very simple reason: the United States was founded, as the Declaration said, uh, of the Independence said, uh, "Men are all men are created equal." Right. If that's true, then the only way you can justify slavery is to say that some men are less than men. Mm. So the racial but, in, but, in, but in Brazil, where, where Brazil uh, imported more slaves than the United States, there was no such ideology. Brazil was not a democratic country. The whole issue never arose. I see. I see. All right. Race doesn't account for differences in black-white income? No. The, the, the differences between uh, uh, income between Western Europeans and Eastern Europeans is greater than the difference between blacks and whites in the United States. Differences in income are, are, are the rule. They are not the exception. Dang. So, looking at all these sociological studies that show a persistent gap mm. between African Americans in income and every other form of American in income is what, useless? It tells us things that we don't need to know. It misleads us. How would you describe that? Uh, wrong, I think, sums it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is not true. Uh, Hispanics uh, have a lower per capita income than blacks. Okay. Hispanic households and families have a higher income than black uh, households and families, simply because the Hispanic uh, families are, are larger. Wow. Because Hispanic families are larger than blacks, they have a larger Economic income. Economic facts and fallacies. Wow. A fallacy wow. is that the current fatherless family so prevalent among contemporary blacks are a legacy of slavery where families were not recognized under slavery. This ignores the fact that the problem has become much worse among generations of blacks far removed from slavery than among generations closer to the era of slavery. Yes. Close quote. Explain that. You mean explain why it is so? Or yes, see, why is that? Why, what, what on earth is going on there? That is so counter to what we, what we assume. Well, first of all, the, 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 the people, most people have not recognized the fact that, in, that if you go back into the 20s, uh, you find that 
uh, married couple families were much more prevalent among blacks then than today. Uh, you find also, incidentally, that the blacks were, uh, had, as late as 1930, blacks had lower unemployment rates than whites. So all these things that we complain about and, and attribute to the era of slavery, okay. those things should have been worse in the past than in the present. Right. But in fact, they're worse in the present than in the past. And I think if you want to look for a turning point, it would be since the 1960s. And what happened in the mm. 1960s? Oh, you began to have not only the welfare state, you began to have the, the, the mindset that goes with the welfare state so that there was no stigma any, any longer attached, for example, to being on relief or welfare. And so, but why? You're a lot of facts. Well, illegitimacy a lot, a lot is exploding of points now. Made, among, uh, being made. Uh, it's high among Hispanics, yes. and it's, it's exploding among whites. But the Moynihan report, when was that, Tom? Oh, in, in the, the 60s. 60s. 60, 65, When believe. Moynihan talked about the illegitimacy rate among yes. blacks, which was exploding then. So what, if the welfare state changes the way Americans think, yes. why did black Americans prove susceptible to that change first? Because they were poorer. Uh, I, I don't think that many uh, uh, Asian American girls who are preparing to go off to Stanford or Harvard uh, are, are going to uh, say, hey, well, I, I can live on welfare, why should I uh, uh, abstain? <laughs> Man, I want to be honest with y'all. Like, it, it's crazy. Like Every time I see like uh, Thomas Sorg in interview, this man is just so knowledgeable, man. Like He knows what he's talking about. And I've noticed like a lot of times when I react to Thomas Sowell, a lot of y'all say the same thing. Man, this man is smart. I even seen some people go as far as say, this man, I wouldn't mind if this man was the president of the United States. You know what I'm saying? And then like, that was the first time I heard him say something about the Hispanic uh, get a, uh, has a higher income than blacks due to them, the family being more bigger than blacks. You know what I'm saying? So it's a thing, it's this thing about Tommy Sowell, man. He say a lot of stuff that you be like, man, I never, I didn't know that. And that's the reason why I get that a lot of y'all say, man, you can learn a lot listening to Tommy Sowell. So when I got put on to Tommy Sowell, because I didn't know who the word this man was. And I just kept getting it in the comment section, Adolf, check out Tommy Sowell. And I'm telling you, since I've been watching this man and listening to him, reacting to him, this man, you can tell. He knows what he's talking about. He's one of them people you can interview. You ain't got to worry about him like getting loud with you, trying to snap on you just because you asked him a question. It's like you can ask this man anything, and he got an answer for it without being smart, getting smart with you, without being getting loud with you or anything like that. It's like you can have a regular conversation with this man. And that's what I like about Tommy Sowell, man. Like I said, you can learn a lot from this man. I'm telling you, I done learned a lot just listening to him. Distinguish the two, race and discrimination. Well, racism is, is, is an attitude inside people's heads. Right. Discrimination is an overt act taking place outside in the real world. Dang, okay. racism is an so, attitude now, in so people's heads. Not only with blacks, you find the same thing with Jews in previous uh, centuries that that part of the United States where, where there was the most racism against blacks, namely the South, right. is where black construction workers were much more common than they were in the North, right on into the 20th century. Uh, and people, most people are unaware that in the South, blacks were the construction workers. I remember a professor at Howard University saying that when he was a boy in the South, his father uh, pointed to some man on the street and said, he was the first black construction, first white construction worker in this town. Wow. And so what was going on there? The racism did not, so, so whites, whites could think of blacks as somehow or other separate, but they'd still employ them because, oh, yes. they, because the market made it profitable to do so. Yeah, in fact, in fact like, yes, and a, in fact, a law had to be passed to stop this because uh, in, the, in the 20s, and particularly in the, as the Depression got underway, uh, Black uh, construction companies in the South using black non-union labor would come up to the North and underbid on government contracts, taking them mm. away. And so this was, this, was ver this was very common to the point where they passed the Davis-Bacon Act, which said that on government contracts, you must pay the prevailing wage, which, so, meant, which uh, was translated almost invariably into the union yeah, wage. Right. So, so your point on the distinction between racism and discrimination is... Don't worry about racism. It's inside people's heads. You can't measure it. Uh, 
there's a strongly subjective, just forget about it, concentrate only on discrimination, and the best answer to discrimination is to let markets operate, because then people will discover, it, it will tend to militate against discrimination. Oh, yeah, when people because, have skills to offer, they'll be... Hey, that's what it is, man. Like I say, if racism is inside somebody's head, hey, it's just inside their head. Nothing you can do about that. It's nothing you can do about that. Just stay focused. Just stay focused, you know? And like I said, man, like this is a very, very good interview right here. I'm telling you, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you that's watching probably know some of this stuff. And I'm pretty sure some of you that's watching probably say, you know what, Ed, I didn't know that. But now I know since it's coming from Tommy Soul. Now I know. That's what I'm saying, man. You learn a lot from this man. Be employed. Whatever this notion of racism in people's heads is, don't worry about that. Is that right? Yeah. The, the, what, I'm, what I'm saying essentially is that racism, racists may prefer one race to another, but they prefer themselves to everybody else. <laughs> so they'll, <laughs> they'll do what's profitable. That's yeah, right. There you That's go. Right. And that, that was even true in South Africa under apartheid, that there were hundreds of construction companies in South Africa that were fined in a government crackdown because they were hiring more blacks and in higher positions than they were allowed to under the apartheid law because that was where the money was. Wow, so he said they were hiring more blacks? Hold on, let me take that back. I just want to make sure, let me see. They'll, they'll do what's profitable. That's right, that's right. And okay. that, that was even true in South Africa under apartheid, that there were hundreds of construction companies in South Africa okay. that were fined in a government crackdown because they were hiring more blacks and in higher positions than they were allowed to under the apartheid law because that was where the money was. Hey, he said that's where the money was, so that's the reason why they was hiring more blacks for construction work. and culture, economic then they, policies. Then he said they had hundreds of them, though, so they had a lot of those. Ugh, boy, because you're talking about construction. Woof. <sighs> why leave construction alone, man? It's too hot. It's too hot. Race is used as a sorting device for decision-making, even by people who are not racists. Mm -hmm. Thus, employers may be reluctant to hire young black males because these employers are aware of what a high proportion of them have been arrested or imprisoned, even if the employers have no antipathy to black people as such and readily hire older blacks or black females, close quote. Are you saying that discrimination, even on the basis of race, you're saying it can be rational. Mm -hmm. Do you want to suggest that it can be acceptable? Well, that, that's a different question, yes, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I do notice that uh, uh, among a group of, empl of, of uh, employers mm -hmm. who routinely check everyone for prison records, the hiring of young black males is greater than in the employers in general. Whereas once they realize... If they find somebody whose record is clean, they'll take him. Yes. <laughs> I mean, but that's... Come on. <laughs> If you listen to this, of course, if they record clean, they'll take them. You know, a lot of times, you know, uh, when a lot of folks, I ain't even just going to say black folk, because it can be black, white, whatever the case may be. When they look at your record, bro, and they can tell you done been to prison, you done been to jail, nine times out of ten, you ain't finna get hired. So if they find somebody that, that don't have a record, they clean, ain't never been to jail, them be the first ones they grab. <laughs> That's just what it is. Uh... Uh, among a group of, empl of, of uh, employers who routinely check everyone for prison records, the hiring of young black males is greater than in the employers in general. Whereas once they realize... If they find somebody whose record is clean, they'll take him. Yes. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> he jumped out of there, bro. He said, look, hey, if they record is clean, they going to take him. But I mean, we... we I all know that, you know, but it's a, at the end of the day, you know, some jobs uh, you can get don't care if you have been to prison. They don't care if you have been to jail because I look at it like this, even though you have been to prison or jail, you know, everybody uh, deserves a, a second chance. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get their life together, uh, want to work and they trying to get out of the streets get out of what caused them to go to prison. So, you know. But at the end of the day, of course, we, uh, depending on what job it is, is some jobs don't check that doesn't check your background. Some jobs don't. Some jobs don't check, don't check your background at all. If they need some workers, they just gonna hire you. You know what I'm saying? But the jobs that do check for background, because a lot of times when you fill out the job application, the first thing they want to know is what's your background? Have you ever been to prison? Have you ever been to jail? Like they want to know. They want to know who they hiring, who they bringing into their building. 
until they place a work. So, but like I said, I guess we all know that. <laughs> but like I said, uh, there was another great uh, video, another great interview by Thomas Sowell, man. Uh, very knowledgeable man, knows what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? I can't see how you don't like this man. It, this man is a very likable person, man. Like, like I said, not one video I watched that I seen this man just completely go off on somebody. He answers questions no matter who you is. And that's what I like about Thomas Sowell since I've been listening to him. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you that's uh, that listened to this man over the years. But like I said, I was just caught on to Thomas Sowell maybe probably like months ago. So I'm so I'm still checking checking them out to try to uh, learn more about Tommy soul you know but like I said we have made it to the end of the video uh, I want to thank you all for watching like I said if you did make it to the end please let me know down below in the comment section I make sure I leave a uh, like beside your comment because I appreciate you staying to the very end like I said hit that like button subscribe and I catch y'all in the next one